Hello you, it's me. Today we're going to talk about the short story collection The Dangers of Smoking in Bed by Argentine author and journalist Mariana Enriquez, which was shortlisted for the 2021 International Booker Prize. This review probably won't have separate sections, but what needs marking on the time bar will be marked on the time bar. I've always loved short story collections and there is a vibe of short story collections which fits perfectly into New Weird, which is my all-time favourite genre. These collections are super surreal, questionably magical, often unsettling and dark, and use these wild situations to make you ask very personal and introspective questions. Some of the best of these that I've read recently are Salt Slow by Julia Armfield, Three Moments of an Explosion by China Miedel, Nudebrank, Nudebrank, by Irena Sen Okoje, uh, Mouthful of Birds by Samantha Shreblin. Uh, th that one and this one actually share the same translator, and this one will definitely be added to that list. This collection is pretty gross, so I would say go into it bearing in mind literally every single content warning you could possibly think of. I will list the ones that come to mind in the video description, but please be careful when you pick this book up. A lot of people will probably find it very difficult to read. This is unapologetically, but not unrealistically, vile. These stories feel like you've just gasped awake from a bad dream, and you're laying there watching the fragments of it play through your head, like you're on top of a roller coaster waiting for the drop. There's this recurring theme of people's lives falling apart, or them tearing their own lives apart, or something else destroying everything for them, and you get used to it so quickly that you are anticipating it and waiting for it in every story, which only adds to the tension. You've got this constant lurking in the background. What's going to go wrong? How is this going to turn horrible? And the weird dream aspect of the stories is something that's compounded by the fact that every story ends so abruptly. I think there's a theme of people actively disregarding advice about stuff like mental and physical health, and the way that characters unconventionally and unhealthily sometimes deal with those things, for various reasons. And I think it makes a lot of the characters in here come across as maybe a bit selfish, even though that's probably not the intention. I think really a lot of the characters in here are acting in ways that we probably do not like to admit that we might act in. So it's kind of freeing, but also a little bit scandalous to see other people making the choices. I think a lot of these stories would be really easily adaptable to film because there's so little that actually happens in terms of visual stuff that's outside the norm. There is an element in some of the stories uh, of body horror that really made me think of Clive Barker's Books of Blood, which is another really good short story collection. Highly recommend you check that out. But most of the magic stuff is not present and it's really played down, which makes most of the horror have to be the psychological side of things. The magic, the fantasy is barely there, but in a really good way. These are all the perfect seeds for larger stories. I think if the author wanted to, they could definitely expand any of these. And that is something that's done. A lot of authors do use their short story early work as the foundation, as the basis for bigger works later in life, even previously published stuff. I don't think any of these really need expanding, but I would be interested to see if it was done, how it was done. I think more themes that run through this collection are the thin line between obsession and resentment and how easy it is to slip from one to the other and how they can often seem similar to somebody that's experiencing them. I think there's a big theme of objects of worship, regardless of whether they are inanimate, living, or holy, and how that worship can arise from a place of love or fear. There is a big religious element to a lot of these stories, and I don't know if that was a personal choice by the author or if that's reflective of the cultural environment in South America, which is where a lot of these stories are set. This was actually written in Spanish in 2009 and took a long time to get published in English. It really makes you wonder what other stuff is out there that is being overlooked or that we are yet to see. Stuff that has not hit the international stage but that very much deserves to. There is a lot of fantastic translated stuff and I do wonder what the process is for finding these gems and translating them, making them accessible to a wider audience. I also wonder with translation uh, how much is lost in translation. But it's one of those, I'll never know unless I learn Spanish things. So if you've read Spanish, if you speak Spanish, sorry, and you've read this in Spanish, DM me, I would love to hear about it. I'm going to give this one four stars. I really enjoyed it. I know that's a very short review, but this is a very short book. And it's really hard to review short story collections. Oh my God. But don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, more reviews coming thick and quick. I read pretty fast. 
don't forget to follow me on Good Reason Twitter, which I'll link down below as well. And if you like sci-fi, don't forget to join our Interstellar Book Club, which I'll also link down below in the description. And I'll see you soon for the next review. Bye.